Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. And this is yet another proof about MK Ultra. This is a little bit more than MK Ultra. Uh, plain and simple, already sometimes in year 1995. 1996 is where I was first already brought into Armenia. Uh, basically, it's uh, it's like this. This was the individual, the first individual. I'm not going to say that he was an MK Ultra staff member uh, because he was not but he was a handler. Uh, this individual became a Prime Minister of Armenia literally through this case literally through this case and I realized just lately unfortunately so I was brought to this country for completely wrong reasons. The audio recording was done in a center of the Poland. It was done on a February 19 of 2020. Oh, this was done this year, but really in February 19 of 2020. Now it's November 17th of 2020 as I record this, just for you to note this. And if I go back to the issue, I will break this down a little bit more in detail as I come closer to the end of this video. Uh, the first thing I would like to do is I would like to present this uh, in this video eventually. I have managed to identify two gentlemen involved in MK Ultra, uh, And the first thing I would want to do is I would want to provide with further evidence about me being brought to Armenia as well, recognizing people, having Armenian people uh, actually resistance, literally meeting me in a center of the Lodz, uh, in the center of the Poland, in Lodz city, but for all the wrong reasons. You could think like I did, I made a conclusion that this is a help, this is just to help me out, this and that, but I was really, really cautious with it. Uh, it was not exactly like this. Uh, all this I will explain, I will detail at the end of this video. Uh, very disappointed and even angry to note it was not like this. They have attempted to take uh, big time advantage over me and that's just something not gonna happen. They did took advantage already of many other people, including Russians. In year 1995-1996 when brought by Americans to Armenia like an animal, drugged up. Um, these people have saw in me uh, a figure of uh, some kind of, I don't know, nationalism, fascism, whatever Americans uh, try to push forward me as a hostage. Uh, and what later on also developed literally in a situation that paved a conflict in Nagorno-Karabakh because this is what Armenia did for Mr. Donald Trump. I will explain everything at the end of this video so you will understand what exactly they were trying to do for American government, for American administration. We'll explain everything uh, at the end of the video. Everything is going to become completely, completely clear. So, the grandchildren of Mikoyan, uh, if you ever heard of MiG, Russian MiG airplanes. Now we are talking about this here, Mikoyan, you see? Mikoyan Gurevich. Um, Gurevich, of course, was a nobody according to them, um, but Mikoyan was really good. Mikoyan was, after all, Armenian, and we're talking about his grandchildren here, which even disliked uh, one of the grandchildren who however did like Russia because you have also Armenian people who love Russia who embrace Russia um, 
as a country of their own, basically, a country that, uh, a fact, the, the bottom line fact is, this is a country where, basically, there is nothing they wouldn't have. Um, they have exclusive rights. They are entitled to the same rights as the Russian people. They are treated with, um, I think, much better than at home in Armenia. This is basically the way I feel about it. Yet the sentiment, their sentiment in the year 95-96 was everything but uh, friendly toward Russia. And because uh, Mikoyan, two brothers, there were two brothers, one was uh, some kind of Soviet revolutionary, another one was engineer for the military airplanes, um, they have decided to see separate ways, completely separate ways, and I really, really dislike that. Um, not just, um, it, it's not something that would uh, make detrimental point about the whole thing. Um, well, actually it did. It wasn't only about the stuff they were going to do to me for United States of America, for the deep neo-Nazi fascist American state. Uh, but it was actually something that really sealed uh, decision on how to view the whole case uh, in respect to uh, this Armenian resistance. The people you're about to hear belong to Armenian resistance. These are revolutionaries. Um, and this is what the United States government uh, involved me into. Uh, listen, let's go to the audio recordings and in the end of the video I will explain to you absolutely everything. Again, February the 19th of 2020 when this stuff was audio recorded. First of all, very, very important for me to accent uh, the gentleman you hear right there. He would wear a black shirt with, it would be uh, written on this shirt. And there were cameras in the corner of this hostel, right inside of the kitchen and right in front of me. He would walk back and forth all the time through the hostel. He had Armenian uh, resistance, Armenian, I don't know what kind of war. Uh, you know, that kind of stuff, which I was really, I paid attention to that, but I really did not completely understood exactly what went on. Later on, however, my memory sketched the whole thing and I started to really understand the whole thing. I started to cope the whole thing about exactly what happened. I will explain everything from A to Z, how the U.S. government attempted to scam me. Uh, into something I explained at the end of this video. Let's just continue at this point. Okay, uh, another thing. Uh, at the end of this video, what I will do is I'll just put, play you the whole audio recording too, so you will be able to catch that after the commentary. I will just do that kind of stuff. Okay, 
Uh, the thing is that I recognize we're in the kitchen. I don't actually even remember that. Um, but what I did was, we're talking about a gentleman who returned, actually did not return, he came from France, Armenian gentleman from France and others too. Uh, not all of them from France, but this one from France, he came to Poland to work. Uh, and it was not exactly like this. This one, this already started to get involved in MK Ultra later on, you know, late time. Nothing like this gentleman here that I'm about to demonstrate you. No, this was this individual this this man right here did you see it this was literally handler the first handler the first individual who also became through this case alone Armenian Prime Minister he became involved very very early uh, in this case and he would remain totally committed to this case throughout the time eventually he became a prime minister. This kind of stuff. I there is there is a whole a lot to say about that stuff, but I don't want to uh, I don't wanna I don't wanna go on with it right now. I just wanna concentrate on totally other issues. Uh, I tell him when you came to Poland first right when you came to Poland first is what I tell him uh, before that you were not in France first you were in Poland first then you went to France and now you return again to Poland this gentleman I am talking to right now this gentleman through this very case he managed to accomplish who we'll call that uh, Armenian resistance I don't know how you want to call this if this is a resistance uh, one thing I have to accent uh, the conflict in Nagorno-Karabakh started already I don't know in July something like this it was several months ago this is today is already November the 17th of 2020 when I am recording this stuff and the first casualties were casualties of Armenian aggression and those are actually a civilians defenseless children women and elderly this is one of the factors why I have determined to see it this way this gentleman was already in Poland um, he it didn't fit him but what did fit him was to be around me because around me when he was around me he managed to meet Macron that's Emmanuel Macron that's a French fascist the French neo-nazi uh, that you have seen also uh, in respect to I have already mentioned the news that was related to the earthquake in Turkey uh, he had a very very aggressive approach along Sebastian Kurz that's Austrian German fascists from Vienna uh, it's few of them they started to create the ripples like this and these ripples are actually amplifying and it created a bigger and bigger amplitude this is what they are creating and they actually they believe they're gonna create like a global earthquake a Nazi revolution basically uh, this was one of the most committed Nazis fascists who obligated himself to start well I guess the new crusade uh, and that crusade I became very very much afraid of uh, in case Armenia somehow would become bigger and would only become another NATO state uh, could actually lead Russia who positioned itself behind Armenia 
literally into a World War III conflict with a Muslim world. And on that side of the world, you do have Iran, and you have a Turkey, and you have a Pakistan. You have a lot of countries with a lot of nukes that can fly. And so this was one of the things why I have determined that I like it or not, I have to see it that way. After all, they don't see us as equal. Uh, even they are treated better in our countries than what they are treated back home in Armenia. Uh, and therefore, it's just uh, no caution is caution enough here. Especially what you are about to learn in continuation. Let's just continue with this stuff. So, for the beginning, in the audio recording, I present the fact but before he came to Poland, first he came from Armenia, he immigrated to Poland. And from Poland he immigrated to France, and from France he immigrated again back to Poland. His first country, the country of origin in Europe, in fact, was Poland. From Poland is where he moved to other places uh, in Europe. Whether that be France, definitely a place where he made uh, a, uh, a home in Europe uh, was a France. It's a France, not Poland. Uh, and from there on, he returned back because it was a route that Emmanuel Macron desired for him uh, to return back to Lourdes because they have anticipated, I will explain everything at the end of the audio recording. By the way, I do also have audio recording about Emmanuel Macron too uh, because he admits me that he knows Emmanuel Macron too. I tell him uh, he was in a very difficult situation when he first immigrated from Armenia to Europe, therefore to Poland. I also tell him he was with a family. He had the whole family with him, a sister and stuff like that. I remember they were in a very difficult situation. They actually slept on the floor when they started. It was very, very difficult for them. This is why he gained a lot of sympathy. Uh, and I was really sure that among the people that did sacrifice big time to meet me, because it was a lot of people from all over the world that would come and meet me. There were people from, from Georgia. There were people from... Ukraine, there were people from, I have no idea, there were people over there from Chechnya, there were people over there from, um, what's the Dagestan in uh, Grotnikach and so on. There were people from many, many places, uh, from Belarus, from amazing people. In this hostel, uh, too, there were interesting people from all over the place. And so this is this is the stuff that uh, you know. Uh, let's just continue with this recording. He says uh, like this, he says, because I totally, totally revealed that he has a sister, that he had a sister with him and everything. Uh, he says, no, 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 no. Uh, they lived in a France. They live in a France. I said, no, 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 no. I said, that's not true. Uh, first, when they came to Europe, first, before the France, they were right here in Poland. Uh, at this point in time, he already knows that he's got exactly a zero chance for any kind of escape. That I know him, that I remember him. Uh, I saw him practically sleeping on the floor. I saw in my mind his sister, his family that was with him. I remember his, I don't know, was that the father probably, uncle, I don't know, at the airport and stuff like this. 
um, he knew he's not going to get away, and he says, "No, it was not. It was not good. It was not good. It was very difficult uh, in Poland." And we start the conversation, and then now he admits that yes, it was a trip from Poland to France. In fact. Uh, he says they created a problem for him, um, some kind of problem that uh, things did not go along well and so on and so forth. Uh, it's basically it's like this, this is not true because I know what exactly happened. Uh, I remember very well that he was received well and this literally by the Polish police. It was actually the Polish police that got on his side and they wanted to make sure that he's got a job, that he's got absolutely everything he needs in life together with his family. They wanted to assure his well-being. Now, the possibility is that there was a presence of a racist element. It could be like this. You know, Christianity, it's like some people are more Christian than other uh, in a Christian world alone. So this is maybe also something that maybe Armenian people who I'm not even saying these are bad people or anything like this. I think that I think actually that they are a really beautiful and good people. I am not trying to denigrate them, destroy them or something like this. I think they are good. I think they are nice people. I think they are wonderful people. Um, I alone was a very difficult person to be around. I alone have caused them a trouble, a problem. Uh, it could have that things had to do with me alone and I'm still here to help them out for the difference of Kardashian. Uh, Kardashians, uh, I am actually interested in helping these people out. I'm not out there to catch them or anything like this. It's just that it's not going to be the way that some of them have imagined they're going to do something really, really filthy, uh, like a present for the US government, something like that. It doesn't work like this. You don't buy the ticket to a freedom by screwing up other Christians, for one thing I'm going to say. You don't do this. You get the ticket to freedom by treating people equally, nicely, just like you would want you to be treated. And you get the ticket when you try to help people. This is like a number one commodity in today's world, right? So. From my point of view, when it comes to Armenian people, uh, there was a girl at Fujitsu. I think she was Armenian, because I did. I was so grateful to her. A trainer. Uh, you have no idea what kind of energy uh, she placed in me. But that was a lot also because she liked me. And I gotta say, I like her too. The thing about it is that what I'm about to explain to you at the end of the video uh, whoever knew about this case will understand what exactly I mean by this. Let's just continue with the audio recording. Okay, um, he said it was not about the racism. Yeah, I wish I would believe this stuff. This is the stuff that worries me the most. Uh, because, you know, no society is actually a perfect society. And um, I would want these people, whatever the hell they are, to feel as good as possible about being part of this world. Simple as this. Uh, the thing about it is that I think he said it's got something to do with, I don't know, maybe immigration or something like this. I don't actually know. What's important for me is the facts I have presented already at the beginning. And that's basically that his arrival destination primary to Europe was Poland with the family. This is the number one thing I want to hear. Not France, but Poland actually. 
Okay, uh, of course, uh, Emmanuel Macron, the only thing he did was he opened him a workplace that is that was uh, well, basically Polish people immigrate to Germany and France for better life, for better pay. Uh, so what is here to say? I mean, Uh, he says I'm going back to France, so I must stay here. Better pay in France, better life. In France, everything is better than in Poland. He still doesn't say anything. Pay attention, he still doesn't say anything about whether that's true or not, what I asserted. Okay, I didn't get uh, anything out of this stuff. Um, I have pointed out, but I don't get any kind of response out of him. Anyways, uh, beautifully cooked potatoes, whatever they prepare themselves, I wish them a bon appetit. And I walk back to my table, and what I do instead, I take the laptop, and I go straight, and this is what kind of bothered me. All this stuff is actually, stuff that you're about to hear me, it's actually even on... A video that time I was sure that I hit something Wow uh, Armenia this is a place I can do MK Ultra on I can go to Google Maps and I can do the same kind of magic I can do for Spain or I can do for some other place uh, like a Belgium and Germany and stuff like this or Poland or Czech Republic and stuff like that or Ukraine and so on uh, and so I started to see Armenia I paid attention to Armenia I, there was a lot of other stuff I had to do and it it um, was kind of a trouble to me but I did pay attention and I went over I went over and they eat and as they eat I go over and then what I, once they finish eating and stuff I decide to go back and ask more questions about it because I was with him also uh, in Armenia and so maybe he can give me some green light about locations I want him to note what exactly I remember about Romania so I start to demonstrate the locations we were at and so on and so forth on uh, video recordings I can actually get some green lights even on certain tanks that I pointed out that I don't know they build or something like this when they build and so on uh, that he gives me a green light because it was a lot of this stuff. We did spend some time together in this hostel after all. So this is really, really interesting. Uh, so I returned back to their table and... Okay, this I did not even understood myself. Oh, 
Oh, I wanted to know how how he uh, how he got uh, how he got what how he uh, you know basically I wanted to know about uh, the connection you know was it that he find out about a Poland that was it maybe through Germany or Turkey I think this is what I said or something like this Uh, Germans, Germans, uh, this is going to come in another video. Germans, uh, Americans, this is uh, another one. This is what was Georgia, Tbilisi. This is where we started to go in year 95 96. Uh, beside Armenia, it was Georgia, the one that was on the list. Georgia was number two. Georgia and Armenia. These are the two countries we would go. Uh, notably, I realized that Americans hated uh, Georgian people. They didn't give it <clears throat> three about whether they are Christians or not. They would go and they would do a meditation insisting to for one to involve himself in atmosphere around him with thought that it's only Aryan people that are around. There is no native people. They already they already saw it through their eyes when they meditated. This is how they meditated. This is horrific actually. said are you are you a Christian are you a Christian yes I am a Christian I, I thought maybe I thought you're from Gruzia or something oh you're Christians I said aha uh -huh. what I need I need to get them talk I stay in Poland and do something beautiful here, I say. I tell him, I try to calm them down, I say, um, Poland should be for everybody, for, for, for the people from all over the world. Uh, everybody should be equal and treated equally. What I try to do is I try to the thing about this. I already did mention it earlier at the beginning that I myself had created uh, a problem <laughs> because of what went on on that MK Ultra. I I steered a lot of problems I'm not even hiding from. Um, if that can be seen like this, I see it. I see it that way because uh, if you want to help someone, if you want to do something good for someone, uh, it's actually really never enough. Uh, conscience I think that you can utilize I think this is also the only way that you can that you can uh, uh, attribute to something good basically is by basically being critical toward yourself too and I, I tried to come him because he did felt my claws on him when he was 
he was kind of handler of me, Andrei Kiyotra. He was a handler. He would take me to different places. Uh, I was given to him under his uh, supervision uh, by the jurisdiction of uh, now this gentleman that you see who became Armenian Prime Minister. Uh, so he had a specific assignment. He had to be very careful with me. Uh, even though I was an idiot, he still had to treat me nicely. I blatantly will tell you how things are. I try to make him feel good. I want him actually to stay in Poland. I tell him in Poland racism exploded. Uh, under Kaczynski, under Morawiecki and Duda that is just more than evident. It's not only racism, it's not discrimination that exploded, it's, uh, it's all kinds of issues the Polish society is uh, facing, uh, including war against own women. I try to make him good, I try to tell him, you know, Poland, Poles alone, uh, if the Germans would win World War II, they wouldn't be here, they would wipe them out, simple as this. I try to make him feel like home, you know, I try to make him feel comfortable, understand for God's sake that, you know, I, I know that I did wrong things and uh, here, please feel like in your home in Poland. <laughs> uh, I work my way, you know, I, I, <laughs> I make them laugh. Uh, I, I go a little bit like this, a little bit like that. I, I try to make him lose up, he's losing up. And I ask him, I said, but you wouldn't want to go back to Poland <laughs> from France. And they're laughing like, no, no, no. You don't want to go back to Poland. You don't want to come back to Poland. <laughs> they are laughing, everybody's laughing. I tell him, come here, beautiful for you, and they are laughing. He, first of all, first of all, this is the first meeting. This is the first time he sees me in, in the real life. This is not on that MK Ultra, uh, for which world I already have explained what it meant to me. It meant to me the world where I have allowed myself everything. And uh, the more it was prohibited, the more I basically allowed myself to make myself a little more logical. Uh, if they refused, not only to call the police, but if the police alone refused once, whenever I would meet them, basically they would handle me in certain situations with a police officer that would take me around. It was like this. Uh, since they refused to assist me, I figure out that it's nothing in the world when I'm drugged up that I cannot do. I figure out there's anything I can do. And I figure out that more obnoxious, the more disgusting I'm going to be during MK Ultra, the bigger the chances are they're going to just let me go because they're gonna, eventually they're going to get fed up with me. So that caused a lot of broken hearts, all kinds of issues that I steered during MK Ultra. And you can imagine the uh, restlessy I did. Uh, and there were also other issues, other reasons why uh, that went on. So what I try to do is I try to make him see me in real life who I am. Because right now he is just like Steve, like this. He's like, he doesn't know what, what basically what, whom he's dealing with, you know. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make him comfortable. So, and so now they're already losing up. They are laughing already. That's a good sign. They are laughing.
I tell him <laughs> everything will be wonderful. Uh, they are laughing like crazy. Uh, I am here. You're gonna be selling ice cream. I think that's what he's doing in France. That he is in uh, a restaurant business, something like this. I asked him again about what kind of job he does. He doesn't want to tell anything. Uh, note what I have stated. Uh, later on, he would do some kind of... Uh, I'm not even sure if that was or was not. Um, but maybe um, carpentry jobs, stuff like this. I'm not sure. Um, I think he did have something to do with ice cream. I think he did have something to do with his business, with his own business, something like this. He said, uh, when I mentioned ice cream, he said that he would go and do it anyways. That's interesting. That's something I failed to ask him, you see. He said in France, very good. I said he got a car, everything. Oh yeah, the ladies come, uh, the ladies you can hear, they come, Ukrainian ladies, and they're all happy, they just love to laugh. I tell him everything is going to be okay.
Now, in meanwhile, I went again and I look at the computer and I'm asking about the city. You're from Yerevan. Uh, and I start to tell them and show them on a computer where we were. We were in Yerevan. Dilijan, Yerevan. We were also in Nagorno-Karabakh, literally in the churches, right on the border with Azerbaijan and so on. Uh, this is the stuff I explain in continuation, everything. We were literally... Th this is the stuff yet that... We're gonna, I'm going to save this for the end. Let's just continue. Uh, this is the stuff that I'm gonna have to present on a video which I have recorded while I was talking to him. I did the screen recording in that opportunity. We were with a Trump and I'm showing you literally locations of some of which were even the remote locations in Armenia. Uh, which I could give you, like I said, some MK Ultra details about how they were developed and so on. He also demonstrated me certain things. We talk about where we were and this and that. But the main thing is to get admission about stuff I have stated first. First, Fra first Poland, then France, and first Poland with the family, 
then France, then he alone came back to Poland. Like a main square. This is important part. I have just identified something, but this is not, I cannot prove that stuff unless I have a recording. Uh, I said, did you go to France in uh, 2013? Uh, this is very important stuff here.
No. Uh, earlier. I tell him it was a long time ago, in 2010. Uh, 2008. I said, did you go to France in 2013? This is, this is the wrong question. He went far earlier than 2013. That's a stupid question, actually, from my point. He says, no, in year 2019, I went to France. Uh, he said, no, I did not go in 2013 to France. I went in 2019. He says, uh, I said, but you were first in Poland and then you went to France. And he says, yes, that's the way it is. And I say, first, you were in Poland, not in France. First, when you came, you were in Poland. A year 2008, when you were first in Poland. He says yes. And then he went to France in 2013 and he said, aha, uh -huh, yes. And you came back to Poland again in year 2019. He says yes. I said, I understand. I said, thank you very much, thank you. Now, it's basically, it's like this. Let's go over here. Uh, you have probably heard this. Uh, I don't know exactly what that means. He told him to actually confirm everything I say or something like this. I do not know. Uh, fact of the matter is what I have stated uh, and he also gave me a green light in 2008 he appeared in Poland first then he immigrated to France in 2013 and came back again to Poland in 2019 and nothing that uh, had anything to do with his initial claims now I don't give a damn whether that means something or it doesn't mean what whoever said this to him I can get this done through the police either way through the Poland they are gonna have to explain the whole thing uh, about what goes on it's a lot I have to say about this Armenian situation I really don't know what exactly it means it, it was that also a stab in my back or was the actual confirmation I do not know but I know the man from the past Actually, both of them, both of them is what I recognized. This settlement here that you see, and uh, I was trying to find this. I was really trying to find this stuff but the house like this here and it was on a Yahoo I did not really I did not care enough 
to ensure that this eventually transition would be mm, somewhat properly done here when we came first to Karabakh and from Kim Kardashian father was involved in that but the whole thing really took off with the Kim Kardashian uh, what you see here this picture here that I got this you see this housing like this that you see it like this it's too damn bad I didn't get but it was this village which I have totally recognized it was today on the Yahoo News When we came first there, uh, it was just one house, you know, it was just one house. And then when we would start coming over time, when we would keep returning back, it was just uh, many, many houses that would start to uh, appear one after another. And before you know, it was a whole line of houses. Uh, they started to build. That was the settlement in Agorno Karabakh we would pay uh, visitations to and that's also the money I was told for the project partially was financed also uh, from the King Kardashian that uh, the money would start to drip in but it was also also other Romanian people that they would be paying um, you see it doesn't show this news that's too damn bad uh, that they, they would be paying for the construction, for the new housing construction. Like I said, I can give a really decent, and I will do this, I will do decent background about Armenia. I should do, I should have done more. Yeah, it's listed under the sports. You definitely not gonna find anything like this. Um, find anything here but this would be interesting one too no not this is basically also individual that gave me a green light on Macron not very likely um, not very very likely it was very difficult uh, and it seems like yeah I'm not even sure whether I should consider that like a completely green 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 light from his point of view um, it's a good stuff that I demonstrate what exactly that looks like that he actually allowed himself that he left himself like open semi open option whether he was there or he was not there it was a lot about depends on how you are gonna see us uh, depends on how you are going to pursue us is depends what you're gonna be depend depends how you're gonna whether you're gonna stand up behind us depends or whether you're gonna give us uh, a full support or you're not gonna give us a full support this is the political stuff this is what they brought me basically this is the kind of chance I was given to basically and it's the kind of stuff I really do not appreciate but it's something worse they have attempted to do far worse and this is why I'm here to discuss what exactly uh, they have anticipated they're gonna do with me how how this would how this would look like this whole thing I am trying to find the street which I saw it this morning when I saw it was a valley and along this valley there was a whole set of homes uh, they would set on fire basically those are all the homes including what you see here this is this kind of a settlements would start to appear in Nagorno Karabakh this is all the money that would come from abroad and they would start to just build uh, homes and enlarge their communities and they were happy laughing uh, along with Americans and that uh, basically that this is it and so on and so forth I know nothing about it 
Now basically it's time for me to explain what exactly happened here. How did this Armenian scam, how this how this is this stuff was gonna operate? Well we were right now talking to one another was inside of the kitchen area at the Gdanska hostel in Lodz. In the kitchen at the top floor you would have you see that corner right there that you see it right there do you see it like that you would have a camera pointing at you you would be in the picture all the time if that was the only camera I think there was more frankly they talk about all kinds of security measures uh, and make no mistake the people who are in this place at Danska 10 uh, you would be surprised what kind of people were here not that they would stay there but they pass through there um, it's like this to destroy me basically to get me killed as a last resort the US government have chosen a very very specific locations on the globe well what surprised me the most about Armenians was and this is when the war broke out when the war exploded this is what what shocked me the most the first city in Azerbaijan which right now um, excuse me I'm not even capable to point out to you The first thing that happened was this was like out of moon. This is what really, really got my attention. It was in Azerbaijan, in one of these cities here, and I'm not sure exactly which one of these cities was it. Let me just make sure that. Uh, the only thing I know is they would drive me literally in the, in, in the country inside of the Azerbaijan. They would drive me, it was a city, I don't know which city was it. And in this city they would drive me on the streets of Azerbaijan. And I was like, a uh, year was sometimes I believe probably sometimes about like 2000 something like this very very far back 2001 I don't know and what am I even doing in this part of the world I was dropped up inside of the car and it was crazy this was totally totally crazy stuff driving in some kind of city in Azerbaijan and talking to me what where the bombs are gonna be falling what they're gonna blow the whole city up and I was inside of the vehicle and I said I did not understand shit I did not understood anything excuse me but what the is going on where are we we are here I look at the people around me and I notice basically no difference between the people I saw on the streets and the people I was with inside of the car and this is what we're gonna blow we're gonna blow the city when you see this blowing when you see the bombs falling here this and that I understood nothing boy I understood nothing Make no mistake, the whole city, through the intersection, stop, go back and forth, go. No. Not too much after that, I found myself literally in Azerbaijan, in front of this president here that you see. This is the Azerbaijani president. Go. 
this year. He was the man. He was the president. He always was. This was the main politician, the main man, the number one. And what I can tell you is that uh, he was pissed off. He was angry. He was... Uh, He was in a total shock. Uh, he was yelling at me. Uh, I'm going to tell you straight, I knew nothing what the f is going on. I, I did not understood anything at all about what went on. The only thing is that they know what we are preparing, what is going to happen, and this and that, and tra la 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 la. And the next thing, I found myself in a Turkey. Oh, this was like, in Turkey we would be often. But this, specifically in Turkey, which city also, I don't know where in Turkey. I don't know where in Turkey, but it was a military. It was a military, with the military people I was, I found myself with the military people, and uh, it was in some kind of a nightclub, they would even take me, and tell me what they're going to do with Armenia, and to me, to me still nothing was clear about what went on. Excuse me, what the fuck went on? What's going on? Nothing is what is clear to you when you are subject to MK Ultra. You are drugged up stone like a stone and you don't know absolutely anything. Similar situation United States of America government developed in the Belarus. Identical situation. Right here in the Belarus. Uh, where a gentleman the main security gentleman this is the man who was not the man yet but it was the man whom he trusted the most. I am just trying to... To put it plain and uh, short and simple, I don't see this man here right now, but this is one of the head person for the security, for the safety of the Belarus, uh, the man who literally had trigger on the nukes. This is the main man right after the Lukashenko, that if anything would go wrong, things would really, really go wrong. If you want to play with the Belarus, you're making a big mistake. Lukashenko already learned same thing like a Muslim world learned about Armenia. Lukashenko learned about 2021 already sometimes, I probably estimate sometimes it was must have been the year, probably I go like this and I say probably that was year like 2003. And when they got me there, boy, it was their hats were doing like this. And that's crazy because Lukashenko was, uh, I have already written a lot about him. Uh, I think he's a really good person. He's a very good person. He's the best person, I think, for the Belarus. I think he's the best person the Belarus ever had. And I think he's the best person the Belarus will ever have. I don't think Belarus is ever going to have another Lukashenko. This is the man who stood up for a Belarus, not in easy moments but in the most difficult times. On a front line, with his life. 
figure out that I'm about to throw a war in a Belarus, that I'm the one who is preparing the war against the Belarus, that I'm about that I'm the one who is preparing the whole civil war in the Belarus, that I'm the one who incited in a war against Belarus and stuff like this. Me having to do with Belarus was like me having to do with the last year's snow. I had nothing to do with nothing in with Belarus. Uh, under MK Ultra I would maybe try to hook up maybe with some girl or something like this with Belarus. Uh, this is the only thing, the only connection I had and my stupidities of course which the US government and what also became I wouldn't call this resistance I would rather to say espionage or I would rather refer to this stuff as um, I would say traitors okay in the best sense I would say traitors uh, Belarus neo-nazi collaborators uh, have demonstrated me they they put me right in front of the right in front of them like a figure like a key figure while behind all this stuff to confuse Belarus authorities United Nations was the one that was massively pushing inside of the country for years they would contraband money exactly what you have seen for 2021 they would bring large sums of money inside of the country with idea to roll the revolution for as long as possible and eventually even cluster the prison system. The prison system would become so clustered that they would no longer be capable to even process the number of jailed, imprisoned people. And that's how the Belarus would fall down. This is what Berlin did. This is what the Washington DC did. This is what Americans did. So therefore, Americans already blacklisted me in the entire Muslim world. If we look at the map, if we look at the map here, uh, you see all this stuff here. You see anywhere from all this here, uh, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, uh, and Chechnya and Dagestan, people who wanted to help me out, and Turkey, and Syria, and Iraq, and Iran, and Afghanistan, and Pakistan, and then you have here Malaysia, and Indonesia, and so on. And you have Saudi Arabia, and Yemen, and Oman, and all this. And they further blacklisted me with a Russia. And they blacklisted me with a Belarus, basically inciting in all this, mentioned groups desire to basically kill me, to choke me no longer to assist me, to help me, but to get me killed. So now, regardless of how legitimate, and of course through them, blacklisted in many other Eastern European countries as well, the Polish government, the Central Intelligence collaborators such as uh, Andrzej Duda, Mateusz Morawiecki, Kaczynski, the Czech traitor uh, Andrzej Babic, they would hide themselves too behind me while at the same time they would promote the war, the civil war in Belarus in 2020, which eventually exploded, as you have, as you were able to see. Uh, even worse, a Belarus people that worked inside of the KGB, uh, once they would come to meet me in Grotniki. They would come to meet me in Grotniki and they would start to do all kinds of BS problems causing me all kinds of problems that I was barking even louder against the Belarus and against the Russia and so on and so forth that they are doing this and that uh, my friends these are all people who enroll themselves in a central intelligence agency with idea to overthrow the government in Russia and in Belarus this is what I regretfully have to say just as Armenians have attempted to and they did I believe that the conflict in a Karabakh that exploded, that what we have seen is not the last one. I believe that Armenians are going to go for the second conflict, just they have promised me they would. The first conflict, however, was manned, just as the case was with Prince Andrew, with the Prince Charles, who were charged with the pedophilia and all kinds of issues like this, uh, to demonstrate me through the world, to the world, 
through the lens through the lenses of some kind of a Christian a radicalist neo-Nazi that is unrepentant about his acts of evil something that does not even basically exist so I think that the first war between Nagorno-Karabakh between Armenia and Azerbaijan was just a gift or I should say a prelude into what Donald Trump hoped is going to develop into a bigger war. Remember, this started with the elections of Donald Trump. It was a pre-election stunt of Donald Trump. And so all those corpses, all those homes that they set themselves on fire, the civilian casualties, all the stuff they did was done out of pure, pure Armenian evil. Us... Salam alaikum, salam alaikum, my friends. Good evening. Uh, you know my name. You know who I am. You are in reality watching what you are watching. This is how United States of America government does with a person whom they target, basically with a person whom they select to be walking dead. And that's what you know. U.S. government, after they have done so much shit to me ruined me 26 years of life through the torture, through blacklisting me on a on a employment market, through, listen, through listing me as a mentally ill person, have attempted also to somehow get done through Armenia. They believe that there is something in me that's going to give them a chance to demonstrate me to at least portion of the world as some kind of a radical. Like Kaczynski would say, Yeshe jeden raz, one more time. Germans have done exactly the same thing to me with a German, a neo-Nazis. I was brought to Germany from 95 and up all the way to mid-2006 to meet prominent German fascists, neo-Nazis, uh, next to whom they placed me, drugged up, then they would take pictures of me and they would, like through the black market, like through under the table, disseminate this to other governments and exchange the information about evil me if you like but this would be too easy this was not the end of it because remember you still have some other people that were interested in helping me out uh, you still have Africa uh, you still have this African continent and this African continent also expressed desire to help me out. I don't know this. I have really not done properly. Now I did. And for that matter, Mr. Bill Gates and Mr. Romney in charge themselves to penetrate through the man that you see him. His name is Tedros Adhanom Gebrehesus. Gebrehesus. This is the Eritrean individual to this part of the world, which is equally sensitive. Nevertheless, again, we have we border here the Muslim world. In fact, in the country itself, Eritrea, where this individual from World Health Organization, he became, he has a communist history, communist profile, and it was completely, completely suitable, especially because of his communist past so-called past he was suitable because United States of America exercised attack on China through the coronavirus so the China because of his communist past and it's also what China told me do not touch him because he has a communist past through this individual United States of America anticipated will harm China. In other words, that he will uh, go against China once the news come out about the coronavirus that uh, basically America pointing finger about the coronavirus at China. So United States of America fear mongered basically me through this individual with the issue of coming coronavirus in respect to China this is number one thing and that's through this 
perfectly designed communist profile and the number two the criminal was actually used for complete cover-up operation for whatever was done to me during the time when I was in uh, Poland in 2018-2019 when I was eventually even hijacked from the Polish immigration center taken for a ride taken for more problems whatever they have done to me that's a really good stuff because they also had me in a hospital it's very difficult to determine what exactly they have done to me and that was done just as I have explained on my new site most likely even on two occasions on one occasion in 2018 and another occasion in 2019 right in between my leaving uh, the immigration facility uh, and moving basically to the city of Zgirsh. This place too is extremely sensitive because Eritrea alone has just few million people and Ethiopia have about 120 million people and it's Ethiopia that actually is a real owner of Eritrea. Eritrea is just a creation of the capitalists just Djibouti is right here this is a French colony still a little country that is just with a million people that is totally controlled by France by the colonialists that are creating a mess in this entire region and as a result keep entire Ethiopia basically hungry away from the shoreline which would allow them otherwise to connect themselves with the China you see this is the shit that this individual here this Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus created because he can do this because this is why he was appointed to the World Health Organization as a chief, as a boss. Because he could destroy China with one little snap of the finger and on top of that he provided a cover up for genocide against me for United States of America. So you can see that United States of America have positioned itself against me alone in a very sensitive points of the world you can see here Ethiopia, Eritrea, you can see here Armenia and you can see here Belarus these are just three of them uh, like super super sensitive uh, points probably the most sensitive points that if through those points if they do what they did what they attempted to do with with me you most likely you are actually a walking dead man because within the Christian society I have to note I said that I am from a Christian country, otherwise Slovenia. My cross is in a drawer now. I am ashamed of it, uh, especially because of what went on, what goes on against the women. Uh, they are after the basic women's rights. Uh, they are fighting against the women's right to abortion. Um, it's a lot of homophobia. It's actually incitement in what we have seen ended 75 years ago. Basically into fascism, Nazism, and the church is just not doing it for the first time. Vatican have already done it in the past, and it seems like they have learned nothing from it. That's why my cross is in a drawer right now. Uh, so, because of our beautiful, beautiful hoganami, whatever you want to say that, the way we Christians are so beautifully designed that you can just see how far the Armenians have gone to get me basically right it wasn't enough that I lost 26 years of life it wasn't enough they got the connections it wasn't enough they got the money it wasn't enough all the stuff they have established through this case they wanted to get a little bit more and that's actually even for the cost of those few silver coins they would get you know, they would actually slit me a throat if they only could for Mr. Donald Trump and if they only could they also would start the World War III involving France Germany, Russia and United States against the Muslim world basically that much about this uh, to the people like this actually I think nothing really counts whether you are uh, a Christian or you are not or wherever it is that you are it's their interests I think they prevail uh, they just prevail over other issues and I think this is the way they see it so I am interested despite all this in helping them out in fact I probably will because I believe that in this world a tolerance 
a mutual respect for one another um, what you can actually do for the person how you can actually help for the person rather than to stab one in the back uh, you know a real Christian values eventually are going to prevail over uh, warmongering over hypocrisy uh, we have more than often seen coming from Hollywood and Hollywood is entirely political place so I might eventually even redo the whole uh, video because this is I would say quite political stuff definitely individual first definitely and probably I have made a little mistake over there it was probably year 2005 that this individual and his family eventually moved from Armenia to the Poland and he probably stayed there for several years working maybe even in an ice cream shop he had some kind of his own store some kind of shop I don't know yes they sleep on the floor from the beginning the police helped them out once they saw it, how they live they came to rescue and they helped them out and then they would move to France um, with he had two young ladies probably his sisters I have no idea what that was family and then others would also come and so on and so forth and they established themselves in France and it's this man through this case eventually that would meet Emmanuel Macron which unlike this time when he says yes 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 like this automatically he quite uh, properly acknowledges and that's going to be in a coming video that I will uh, release the audio recording about him recognizing Emmanuel Macron who was involved in this case all along since 96 since 97 already from his father uh, who was a medical professional and it's also how he learned about MK Ultra. there is a factory in Illinois in this very city here in Novo Mesto where I am the French had more than a reason to stop by and pay frequent visitations to this house when I was brought whenever I was brought here drugged up from the United States of America for torture because ladies and gentlemen let's be real this was a torture uh, thanks for watching this video I don't actually have anything else I would add to this video this summarizes and proves that I do know what I'm talking about when it comes to Armenia I have recognized another lady Armenian uh, at Fujitsu and I think that was a completely different issue uh, I think that she was so unique uh, uh, Armenian in a sense of going out it was not from the same thing this is not the same thing it's different thing what pissed me off the most what angered me the most if I repeat is that the individual who was translating to the other individual would walk around with a black shirt on which it would be written with the big letters uh, Armenian resistance, Armenian, I don't know, uh, anti-terrorist or something like this, military and guns and I don't know what kind of a shirts he would post over there in front of this camera and I was working there on the computer. That's the stuff that pissed me off, excuse me ladies and gentlemen, but you're trying to portray me that I'm part of something I have absolutely nothing to do with it. It seems like you screw up 26 years of my life was just simply not enough. You seems like you try to blacklist me more. You tr it seems like you try to uh, cause me more damage. You, you seems like you want to destroy me, rip me apart for your masters over there in a Washington D.C. That is, excuse me, disgusting. This was recorded on November the 17th, 2020, and audio recording, which I'm about to repeat again on a February. 19 of 2020 I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you understand a little bit more about how American politics uh, how American politics eventually operates let's go over this audio recording
Uh, basically, basically you have seen pretty much how that uh, sounds like. Um, it's a little bit hard for someone that they have handed one into um, into a hands of people like this for so long to just uh, that you would not even get the answer. Basically, a terrorist got you, handle you. Uh, these are handlers, make no mistakes about it, MK Ultra handlers. And he appeared over there basically to do something else, it appears to me. He would not even give you like a clear answer. Uh, the barrier, however, between the two, between all of these people and myself in this hostel was lowered within the following days. What I want to say is that we, the Russians, I'm from Slovenia, but you know in this place, either it's a Russian or a Polak or Czech or Ukrainian, whoever it is, uh, they can consider one, as a matter of fact, they do, like their home. We are not so stupid, for one thing I'm going to tell you. Uh, and the second thing, this here, this, this here, this is the city. This is also one of the places they would bring me. This church here, whatever that is. And this, this place, this, this is the one I was looking forward to demonstrate to you. This is called Village of Knaravan. 
This is where we would go with the Trump. We would pay visitations to this place already. Whoa, my God. Uh, one of the first places in Karabakh was this one here. This is not too far. Some, how we made it over there, I don't know. At later stages, they would already had planes going through, through uh, to Karabakh. So you could say that the American administration was in this war involved all along. Another thing I would say is this thing here. When we came here to this village, there was only one house that stood up. It was one house and I had that house on another picture. Then it would be one, two other houses that would appear and then one day, one time we would come, and there would, there would be, there would be like a several housing, several houses that would just like disappear, and they would be laughing, all exciting about, and the children already had to go to the school. So, first time probably that we, when we came here, God knows, maybe it was '97, maybe something like this '96, and it was like one house, and then within the next, I would say probably three, four years or something, three years or something like this, you would already have another uh, two, three housing projects. And then it would be the whole line all of a sudden that would just extend way into this direction here. And the school, a new school, whatever that was in this direction too, the bus would come right here, whatever mini bus, whatever it was they have used, and they would just go to this direction like this to the school, they would take them if you have any doubts about my account. It's called a village of Knaravan. And another thing that I want to say to you, in the Germany, these are the two people that they would have me post next to. One was a Chikhanovskaya and this was the woman they involved already from the very beginning Americans selected for the revolution and another one was Navalny this was individual that also was selected by the John McCain this is this was the American angel boy I have excuse me not to demonstrate this very well in the Germany they would pose next to me these people. One was Navalny, another one was Chikhanovskaya, that's a lady right here, this one is for the Belarus. And these are all by the West selected people, American selected, selectively by Berlin selected people to overthrow the governments uh, for most of the Belarus. The idea was to crash the Russia, the idea was to get the Belarus and then to crush the Russia, basically economically put one on her knees. That was the idea. This was the main thing. This is what Germany, this is what the European Union invested everything into this thing. While at the same time Navalny, he was just used to also to be as a source of extortion against the Russian government through which Germans believe that Russia is going to become obedient dog basically and is just going to follow the orders from the West basically comply with the neo-Nazi global order, grand order. This here again is the village. The name of this village is Knaravan, Knaravan, village of Knaravan. And if you would look in the map, it's right here next to Armenia, like this, 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 this I can never forget. I could never forget the sites all this stuff impossible entire Karabakh yes I know entire Karabakh I'll probably I don't know if I'm gonna do a video on that stuff or not when we came here in 96 there was one house only and that house is actually I have a photo of that house that was the first house within the next two years I'm gonna say Two years, not three years, but two years, there would be another two houses 
that would join. We're going to say number one and number two. And then within sometimes in 99, in year 2000, there would be the whole like this that you see here, a whole set of new houses that would appear. The children would simply commute with a bus that would come to pick them up. This is the bus you see I'm making here right now. And they would be transported to the new school in this direction like this. They would come in the morning, they would just pick them up and they would start to transport them to the school. They were really, really happy about the new territorial games. Games. Uh, really, really proud about uh, enlargement of their community. This is the way it was, ladies and gentlemen. You know? This is, this is the history of this place here. In case somebody has doubts. I'm going to release more audios and videos about the uh, Azerbaijan. Uh, but this is the way it is. Uh, this kind of stuff is like a death sentence. Uh, when you are... This is how far Donald Trump would go. As far as this. In 96, 97... Uh, 98, something like this, it would be like not far from Armenia, basically. It would be this here, that much. And then they would already establish air connection and they would already commute themselves to Nagorno Karabakh, basically into area here that they occupied from Azerbaijan. They would already establish air connection and they would commute themselves. Now, before you have seen me. Armenian Prime Minister, a gentleman who was the first one involved in this thing here. Um, Armenia got a huge, huge, huge seat back. Armenia was involved in SS operations. They came to Poland to slaughter Polacks. They came uh, to Poland through the German military on their way uh, to fight the Russians. They wanted to murder Russians, Polacks, and so on and so forth. This is what they were. They were hired as a mercenary to slaughter our Slavic people, basically. This is the history of Armenian people. And one of the individuals in this Armenian parliament made a big error, a big mistake, and this was not the individual you see here. This one is actually very capable. He learned to imitate Benjamin Netanyahu. That's why I demonstrated you photos of Benjamin Netanyahu. And he learned to imitate him. He learned to take a different stand because the counterintelligence caught one of the Armenian parliamentarians, minister, maybe who knows who, who would display fascist, neo-Nazi, anti-Semitic tendencies, lowering Jews to the same level of the Russians, viewing them as a subhuman beings. And that's actually is what gave the leverage in this war to Azerbaijanis. Uh, it was too late for Armenia once the Israel learned about the Armenian and neo-Nazi views and the, while Armenians regretted deeply their intentions it was uh, too late uh, they got a fair and square message from Israel how these things are going to be tolerated and me, myself, I'm also not a dog that I'm going to be licking the floor of some terrorists or something like this. Uh, even they call themselves a Christian or whatever. This is not, this is not my spot on this land. Um, I don't actually have really anything else I would add to all this. Uh, thanks for watching this video. Um, as salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Uh, thanks for watching this video. Have a good night.